Welcome back to the Financial Literacy Project, a free educational video series presented by the American Bar Association, Tort Trial and Insurance Practice Section, and Thomson Reuters. Remember as you proceed through the Financial Literacy Project modules that the information provided is for educational and informational purposes only. That means that the information should not be considered legal, tax, financial, investment, or other advice for specific situations and does not create a client relationship between you and any of the attorneys or the financial professionals who present the information. In the last segment, we heard about different types of credit. In the next segment, we'll learn about the difference between credit unions and banks. So let's hear from our next presenter, Laura. My name's Laura Searcy. I'm a relationship manager with First Horizon Bank. I'm pleased to talk to you today about the differences between banks and credit unions and the many products and services available. When considering the best financial institution to meet your needs, it's important to understand the difference between banks and credit unions and the different products and services available at both. A bank is a financial institution licensed to receive deposits and make loans. There are several types of banks, including retail, commercial, and investment banks. Banks often have more branches and ATMs nationwide and tend to offer a wider range of banking, loan, and retirement products. In addition, bank mobile apps and online technology tend to be more advanced. Credit unions follow a basic business model. Members pull their money. They are buying shares in the cooperative in order to be able to provide loans, demand deposit accounts, and other financial products and services to each other. Any income generated is used to fund projects and services that will benefit the community and the interest of its members. Credit unions are also significantly smaller in size than most banks and are structured to serve a particular region, industry, or group. Many credit unions require some form of membership. As a member, you participate in the union's affairs. You have a vote in determining the board of directors and decisions surrounding the union. Credit unions also tend to have lower fees and better interest rates on saving accounts, loans, and credit unions are exempt from paying corporate income tax on earnings. Next, we'll discuss products and services. A checking account is a deposit account that allows the holder to make deposits and withdrawals. Checking accounts are very liquid, allowing for numerous deposits and withdrawals, as opposed to less liquid savings or investment accounts. Typically, checking accounts don't offer much, if any, interest. Money can be deposited in a checking account at a bank and via ATMs through direct deposit or other electronic transfer. Account holders can withdraw funds via banks and ATMs by writing checks or using an electronic debit card or credit cards paired with their accounts. It's important to keep track of checking account fees, which are assessed for overdrafts, writing too many checks, and allowing the account balance to drop below a required minimum, if applicable. Savings accounts are interest-bearing deposit accounts held at a bank or other financial institution. Though these accounts typically pay a modest interest rate, their safety and reliability make them a great option for setting aside cash you want available for short-term needs. Savings accounts have some limitations on how often you can withdraw funds, but generally offer flexibility that's helpful for building an emergency fund, saving for a short-term goal, like buying a car or going on a vacation, or simply transferring surplus cash from your checking account so it can earn more interest. Types of savings accounts include traditional savings, certificates of deposit, and money market savings. A credit card is issued by a financial institution and enables the cardholder to borrow funds from that institution. Cardholders agree to pay money back with interest according to the institution's terms. Credit cards are issued in a variety of categories. Standard cards simply extend a line of credit to their users for making purchases, balance transfers, and or cash advances, and often have no annual fee. Premium cards offer perks such as concierge services, airport lounge access, special event access, and more, but they usually have a higher annual fee. Rewards cards offer cash back, travel points, and other benefits to customers based on how they spend. Balance transfer cards have low introductory interest rates and fees on balance transfers from another credit card. 
Secured credit cards require an initial cash deposit that is held by the issuer as collateral. Charge cards have no preset spending limit, but often don't allow unpaid balances to carry over from month to month. A debit card is a payment card that deducts money directly from a customer's checking account when used, also called check cards or bank cards. They can be used to buy goods or services. Some debit cards offer reward programs, like credit card reward programs, such as 1% back on all purchases. Debit cards can be used to get cash from an automated teller machine, ATM, or a merchant who will add an extra amount onto a purchase. Having a debit card eliminates the need to carry cash or physical checks to make purchases, which can usually be made with or without a personal identification number. Depending on the type of purchase, the merchant may place a larger, temporary hold on funds when a customer uses a debit card for a purchase. Example of this can include hotel rooms, car rentals, etc. Keeping in mind that debit cards usually have daily purchase limits, meaning it may not be possible to make an especially large purchase with a debit card. Additionally, you may be charged an ATM transaction fee if you use your debit card to withdraw cash from an ATM that's not affiliated with the bank that issued your card. Prepaid debit cards are an option for people who don't have a credit card or access to a regular debit card connected to a bank account. Unlike a regular debit card where the amount of money you can spend is tied to how much money you have in the banking account it is linked to, a prepaid debit card has a fixed amount of money available to spend. The amount declines as you spend it and rises only if you reload the card. A prepaid debit card can be a useful alternative to cash and operate much like a gift card. Spend whatever amount of money is stored on the card. It can be reloaded online or at an ATM, a participating store, or other physical location. They are issued by banks and branded by the major credit card companies. Keep in mind, there are many fees associated with prepaid debit cards, so it's important to shop around for the best deal to suit your needs. A personal line of credit provides access to unsecured funds that can be borrowed, repaid, and borrowed again. Opening a personal line of credit requires a credit history of no defaults, a credit score of 670 or higher, and reliable income. Having savings helps, as does collateral in the form of stocks or CDs though collateral is not required for a personal line of credit. Personal lines of credit are used for emergencies, weddings, and other events, overdraft protection, travel, and entertainment, and to help smooth out bumps for those with irregular income. Home equity lines of credit, HELOCs, are the most common types of secured lines of credit. A HELOC is secured by the market value of the home minus the amount owed, which becomes the basis of determining the size of the line of credit. Typically, the credit limit is equal to 75 or 80% of the market of the home minus the balance owed on the mortgage. HELOCs often come with a draw period, usually 10 years, during which the borrower can access available funds, repay them, and borrow again. After the draw period, the balance is due or a loan is extended to pay off the balance over time. HELOCs typically have closing costs, including the cost of an appraisal on the property used as collateral. We've just covered banks versus credit unions and products and services. Now, let's get digital and learn about online and mobile banking and transferring funds. Congratulations, you've completed the Banking Matters module for the Financial Literacy Project. Knowledge is power, so be sure to share this module with your friend, friends, family, or anyone else in the community who might benefit from it. Empowering ourselves changes our lives but empowering others changes our communities.